Good evening, folks. Very special edition tonight of Renegade Online. Thank you so much for being here. Obviously, not our usual date and time, but nonetheless, this is one hell of a busy week. And over a thousand of you watching as we start the show. Do me a favor before we get any further. It's free. Just hit the like button and share this sucker out because we've got a lot of important things to talk about. Retweet it, Facebook it, whatever the hell you like. We appreciate you. But all of this, all of this is something that people have been waiting for us to respond to. And when I say us, I mean the community at large, the gaming community at large. Because this issue that we're about to go into isn't just about one person or one website. It's about everybody. It's about all the folks you see on Twitter and all the folks you see out there in YouTube, Twitch, Rumble, name it, kick, whatever. They're all out there trying to have a good time, but there's people inside the industry that are trying to maybe leverage things a bit further into the corporate world that might be having an impact on gamers' enjoyment. And I want to be clear, there's absolutely nothing wrong with having diversity in games themselves. There's nothing wrong with having diversity in the gaming community. Hell, there's nothing wrong with creating a gaming group that's around one demographic. We don't care. That's not the issue. The issue is, is when a line gets crossed and it starts creeping into corporate boardrooms or it starts creeping into actual designs of games. And the reason for that is because not only are there laws in the United States that expressly prohibit discriminatory hiring practices, but at the end of the day, it all comes down to something that we talk about here on Valiant Renegade quite frequently, especially with the entertainment industry. We've got a Disney annual shareholder meeting coming up on Wednesday this week. We'll be covering that live. In fact, that live show is already set up. So make sure you check that one out when you leave here. Do not miss that annual shareholder meeting. It's going to be wild. But in this case, with gaming, just like with the entertainment industry, just like with movies and television and everything else that we cover, as we always do, we put these industries through the business and financial lens of reality. Nothing's going to be different here tonight with gaming. And that is simply this. At the end of the day, all of these businesses are effectively the same. They're in the money-making business. They make money by either making movies or TV shows or video games or whatever the case is. And at some point, corporate America is going to have to wake up to some reality here and realize that are they hiring or are they bringing in consulting firms or are they doing things that have additive value to the bottom line? Now, to some people out there, that sounds cold. Profits over everything else. Well, believe it or not, that is how capitalism works, and that is what America was built on. It's just simple facts. And especially for publicly traded companies out there, that's their ultimate job. They have what's called a fiduciary responsibility, and we've covered that many times here on this channel. That fiduciary responsibility says simply this, do what's right for the owners of the company. Do what's right for the shareholders, not stakeholders, shareholders. And video gaming companies and Hollywood film and television studios alike are all under that same guise. They have to do what's best to make the most money. And the question out there is, are some of these consulting groups really furthering that end or are they playing social and political experimental politics inside of these gaming companies to further an end that doesn't increase shareholder value doesn't increase sales are they actually damaging these companies and damaging the products that they create some of which have two three four hundred billion dollars of capex or capital expenditure invested in these games these movies these tv shows We've covered that at length here. But tonight, we're going to do things a little bit differently because it's about the gaming industry, and it's all about one particular website, and that's That Park Place. Now, it's no secret, I've said before, I'm an affiliate of That Park Place. John Trent, WW Pro, and, and a lot of other folks out there that have worked together uh, to bring this, you all know of these affiliations. These are very public affiliations. But when one of us gets hit, well we're all gonna answer back with one voice because you see in the gaming community, it is very diverse. 
but it's never seemed to have been an issue before now. I grew up in New Orleans going to private schools with kids from all different backgrounds. We had white kids, black kids. We had kids from India. We had kids from the Philippines, Japan, Korea. We all played the same video games together. We didn't care. There wasn't a need for a safe space. The safe space was the video game itself for all of us. It didn't matter what we looked like, what we sounded like. It didn't matter where we came from. It just was. Now, today in 2024, it seems like everybody needs a segregated safe space from something. Well, tonight, we're going to try to figure out what exactly that is because so far for me, at least on Twitter, nobody's been able to give me an answer. So let's bring in our esteemed panel this evening. And we have some newcomers to this show, and they are very welcome to be here. And I hope you all make sure that you follow these fine uh, guys and gals on their own YouTube and Twitter channels, wherever they are, Twitch, Kick, whatever. I'll let them all introduce themselves and where they are. But first, let me bring in our typical core, those that you know here best on Valiant Renegade and Renegade Online. First of all, my right hand and somebody who is also affiliated with that park place, WDW Pro. How are you doing, sir? Happy to be here, Valiant. Not only are we talking about the gaming industry and the DEI destruction that has been wrought against it, but also freedom of the press, freedom of speech will certainly come up. Folks, as we get into what the cease and desist looks like that was given to John Trent and the response, the official response that will come from attorney Ron Coleman yes. later in the show, uh, folks, just know that Ron says this is as far as he has ever seen a cease and desist go, uh, it's farther than I've ever seen anything go. Yeah, It goes so far, Valiant, as to declare that that park place would never be allowed to mention the company in question ever again, nor even link to a video in which that individual or company is even remotely named. Yes. It is especially Valiant, given that it... Uh, there was the original thread that condemned anyone who even posted links to the articles or discussed them. I personally think that it is dangerous to the entire community of vloggers, bloggers, journalists, reporters, etc., to have this sort of demand made. Yeah, it's it. I think it crosses a precipice of just being very dangerous. And in, in my, this is my personal opinion. This is not the legal opinion. This is not reflective of that park place. And I want to make that very clear. Um, it's it's a bit silly, uh, but we want to talk about it. And the reason we want to talk about it is because this is a moment for everybody out there in our community, our friends at Geeks and Gamers. Hail to the 199 out there watching right now. Our friends from FNT that are here tonight. Um, we got a lot of folks, and I'm talking about you guys in the chat right now. Um, this is about all of us because this is this is a tip of the iceberg moment. And this is a moment where we either stand up with one voice and say, no, enough's enough. We're not having it or it's just going to keep happening. But let me bring in some of our other guests right now because we do want to talk more about that. First of all, also affiliated with That Park Place on YouTube and investigative journalist extraordinaire Jonas J. Campbell and our resident gaming expert and sometimes may make an occasional thumbnail, Fat Steven. I am yeah, good. <laughs> um, um, thanks. Nice to be here. I'll get to yours next week for Wednesday. All right. Well, let's get to it, folks. Here it is. This is, for the first time, this is the cease and desist demand from Black Girl Gamers. But this, directed to John Trent, the editor-in-chief of ThatParkPlace.com, on behalf of Jan Lopez and Black Girl Gamers Incorporated, dear Mr. Trent, Please be advised that our firm has been retained by Ms. J.N. Lopez, CEO of Black Girl Gamers Incorporated, here and after BGG, which I will stipulate that Ms. Lopez is actually, I, my understanding, if, unless I'm mistaken, is a U.K. citizen. Uh, so she hired an American firm to, to send this letter. As you know, Ms. Lopez and Black Girl Gamers are well known in the gaming community. Well, they are now. Uh, yes. Our firm was retained because Ms. Lopez observed a series of unwarranted and defamatory attacks against her character and reputation made by you and various online commentators who follow or share your views. 
These false, unwarranted, and defamatory attacks are also directed at black girl gamers. Additionally, Ms. Lopez observed that you have publicly used her name, image, and likeness without her prior authorization on your website at www.thatparkplace.com. Now, folks, let me stop right there. <laughs> so, um, I think as YouTubers and Twitter folk, X folk, whatever it net is now, um, we've probably all posted pictures and images that were publicly available out there, reposted them in reference to journalistic pieces or commentary that we've made under free speech. Have we not? I think yep. everybody has. Yeah. So here is their actual demand. We demand that you immediately cease and desist from posting or displaying any videos and or comments about Miss Lopez and black girl gamers. Repeat, don't talk about anything. Don't say anything. We demand that by April 5th, that would be Friday of this week, 2024, you remove any and all links and references to videos, for example, YouTube or Twitch, that comments upon or visually depicts Miss Lopez and her brand. Continuing on, video commentary and comments posted online that attack Miss Lopez's moral character and accuse her and black girl gamers of engaging in unlawful and discriminatory hiring and retention practices are hurtful, baseless, and defamatory. The accusations that you levied against Miss Lopez and BGG are simply untrue and demonstrably false. These defamatory public accusations have resulted in racist, sexist, and misogynistic communications directed at Miss Lopez and BGG's public brand. These defamatory public accusations have also resulted in various communications directed at Ms. Lopez threatening violence against her person and the company, resulting in a law enforcement referral. These reprehensible comments and video posts have damaged Ms. Lopez's personal reputation and placed her in reasonable fear of bodily harm. The false accusation of discrimination levied by you has adversely affected Miss Lopez's personal life and damaged BGG's business reputation and public profile. I'm going to stop there. Um, I feel like we've heard some of these kind of accusations before when people raise issues with casting or writing in movies or video games and, oh, you caused us to be threatened. But I will stipulate that as far as I personally, Valiant Renegade, am aware no such evidence was attached to this complaint showing said threats. I'm not saying that some may or may not have been made. I just, I am not personally aware of any such threats. Um, and of course, anything like that would be reprehensible. Nobody should be personally going after anybody or putting anybody's life in danger. But then again, I've we've heard these stories before, whether or not there is some legitimate evidence behind this I, I don't know i just don't know um but that's Alan, can i just point out one thing it's like yeah. you made a very important statement there it's like please don't harass these people uh and that is a courtesy that i would like to highlight that all of us have made at one point or another and yet and yet kotaku's and pc gamers and everybody else out there trying to you know and and uh, have never made the same statement have never said hey don't okay. harass anybody we're publishing a piece it's really about the issue none of them have said that this is a unilateral courtesy that we extend that is never extended back to us it's yeah true. Now, i'm really why i made to speak i always say do not harass these people every time right because you shouldn't we can criticize yeah. them we can you know deconstruct what they're saying but don't go out of your way to attack them because i think Abruta said it too one time that if we attack them we're no better than okay. them you should never I mean, do that. Can, can we, I would can also we... point out that if there was a hypothetical group that was, say, 10,000 strong that was engaging in some kind of mass reporting or mass flagging campaign, that would also be. That uh, might also be, um, you know, mm -hmm. something along those lines might also be problematic, which maybe have you know been suggested out there. Let me continue on with this real quick. Please note that this law firm. Now, this is this is where I admittedly personally had to chuckle a little bit. Please note that this law firm does not attempt to restrict legitimate free speech. 
And we believe that the Internet is an important medium for dissemination of accurate and truthful information and for fair comment on issues of interest. However, the defamatory comments made by you unlawfully encroach upon our client's rights. Now, I'm in full agreement with the first part of that statement. Um, I, too, am a big proponent of the freedom of speech uh, and the dissemination of accurate and truthful information. But I don't think that trying to suggest in the rest of this letter that what was presented in that extensively researched and well cited with screenshots of what is going on, you may disagree with things and that's fine. Um, but to suggest that it is uh, uh, defamatory in that regard, I think may be a bit of a stretch, but again, that is my personal non-legal opinion. We'll bring somebody in that may have a legal opinion. Um, continuing on uh, from this to the second page, this letter puts all, all on notice that should there be any further defamatory comments about Miss Lopez and black girl gamers, we will have no choice but to recommend that our client this would be Ms. J.N. Lopez and Black Girl Gamers Incorporated, pursue all legal causes of action, including the filing of a lawsuit to protect her interests. We will pursue both monetary damages and attorney's fees and costs incurred by our client as a result of the legal action. It's our hope that this correspondence will alleviate the need for any such filing or legal action. Thank you. Uh, Diallo K. Morris. And I, I want to say before I bring him in, and again, this is me. This is Valiant Renegade talking. This is not our legal counsel or legal counsel of TPP or whatever the case may be. Um, the fine gentleman who crafted this letter on behalf of his client, I'm sure is a very perfectly capable, uh, very learned attorney. Um, according to his bio, he began serving our community or his community as Commonwealth's attorney for the city of Chesapeake and, and now continues to do so in private practice. He draws on 25 years of legal experience to assist his clients in all criminal defense, traffic, and family law matters, okay? Um, that's the attorney's bio that is representing um, Miss, uh, Miss Lopez and Black Girl Gamers Incorporated. Here's our attorney. Um, this is a gentleman who is a commercial litigator with extensive first seat trial and appellate court experience who focuses on torts of competition such as trademark infringement, unfair competition and consumer law. Besides his trademark work, he is also known for his internet related and First Amendment advocacy regarding both religious and free speech rights, including his represent representation of Simon Tam and the slants in the watershed free speech case, Batal versus Tam, in which the US Supreme Court ruled that the prohibition against registration of disparaging trademarks was unconstitutional. So here's a guy that might know his way up the court ranks. Um, and he's, uh, well, you know, he's our lawyer. And uh, he's here with us now. And you all know him. The great Ron Coleman joining us right now. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Coleman. Ron. Hey, how you guys doing? How nice of you to drop in. Hey. Oh no, it's 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 fine. We're Fantastic. so we're we're so glad that we have uh not only a a a, a you know massively uh a successful attorney here, but somebody who is a professional champion uh, specializing in First Amendment free speech litigation and internet litigation uh on this matter. So Ron, I, see, I thought you were going to say professional that that I was all those times that I won the Mr. Universe, and it's a, it's a, <laughs> there's a lot of confusion on the internet. A lot you of SEO confusion. Arnold so many times. You know, Ron, I, I said this on Friday Night Tights last week, um, getting this out there. But I, I think, and this is, again, my personal opinion. I think with this, I hope with this, that this community, everybody on this panel, everybody watching, all of our friends out there from all the other YouTube channels, um, that, that I hope as you deserve to be, uh, would become the legal counsel of record on these kind of things for all of us. Because I have a feeling this is the tip of the iceberg. And we're, we're just not going to sit here and take this anymore. Well, if this is an iceberg, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sweat sailing the Titanic. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no, I, I had I had some uh, uh, some questions like, uh, uh, you know, ba- back in my law school days, you're you're going to be my professor, and I'm going to be in the hot seat here in the Socratic method. Uh, so here is a dime, Mister Grums. <laughs> <laughs> no PTSD. Ah. <laughs> So, like, what do they got to prove here for 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 defamation? Like, uh, you know, I, I does the statement have to be um, asserted as a truth? And I think another component is that uh, there has to be some sort of standard of malice present. I don't know if it varies by state, but those that's like one of my general questions. So let's talk about the standards for a defamation claim. A uh, truth is always a complete defense to a defamation claim. So you can never be sued for defaming someone by stating something that is true. Now, if the person being defamed or the person claiming defamation is a public figure and the letter suggests that they consider themselves public figures, doesn't it? What was the opening line? They are now. Very well known. We're we're super, super Mm -hmm. famous. So... If in fact that is their position, then then you then there's a higher standard. Now, non-public figures, if you if you write something def- defamatory about me, meaning it's not true and it's harmful to me, then I can win merely by proving that you were negligent. Now, different states do have different standards for negligence in a defamation context, but if it is a public figure, like a really famous gaming consultancy, then you have to prove actual malice. Actual malice has very little to do with malice as we use the word in normal everyday English. Mm -hmm. What it means is that the person or institution or entity pup that did the publication either intentionally lied, well, you can't lie if it's not intentional, either lied or in other words, intentionally stated the false claim and it has to be about a factual matter, not an opinion, or a purported factual matter, or was recklessly indifferent to the truth, meaning not merely negligent, but you were basically willfully blind. You ignored the obvious truth because you wanted to pretend not to know the truth. That's a very high standard. And there's another aspect to this here, which is that these... Lawsuits are so frowned upon by the law now that in many states, there is something called a slap suit. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. I figured Mm -hmm. you're going to go over that during your video. Yeah, Yeah, I am going to go over that briefly during my video. Strategic lawsuits against public participation. Uh, Different states have different slaps um, statutes. California was the pioneer in this area. Interestingly, this lawsuit, this uh, cease and desist letter was sent from a Virginia lawyer. So they must be thinking of Virginia as the place where they would want to bring the lawsuit. Virginia has a recently amended anti slap law. Oh, no. And you can be, you don't have to be, unlike in California and New York where it's not discretionary. New York has got is is crazy actually now. Uh, Virginia gives the judge discretion to award attorney's fees for a for for using defamation as a way to chill or an attempt to chill first amendment protected speech. So I, that's pretty much the elevator pitch the or the, the the thumbnail on defamation law. And you guys can use your judgment as to whether we have that. Keep in mind that what John said when he first came came in, everything in the article, says John, is something I can back up. Take a good look at that letter and see if you can figure out what false claims they're referring to. In my practice, when I – and I do have to send cease and desist letters sometimes. Right now I'm representing – people some of you might know as plaintiffs in defamation matters, including uh, Nate, the lawyer, a, uh, an internet fave. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And, and uh, Nate Nate has become a good friend through that process. Now we got bounced the first time. Uh, We've got an amended complaint. That's now before the court. Uh, I just filed a lawsuit on behalf of Brendan Straka of the walkaway movement. 
uh, for defamation against a bunch of um, very weird, obsessed people who have made his life a living hell on the Internet the last uh, year or so. Uh, and you might have heard of Gavin McInnes, who, who was profoundly canceled by, by everyone, thanks to the Southern Poverty Law Center. We sued them in Alabama, and the judge on that case has been sitting on a motion to dismiss by the SBLC for now going on five years, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> sitting on it, not ruling on it, because... Uh, when you send a cease and desist letter in a defamation context, one of the things you want to make sure you do is specify what the false claims were. This would give your defendant, the person who's harming you, the opportunity to assess the claims and decide how to treat them. And maybe even to immediately remedy, let's say the lawyer says, Everything here is BS. We can win this case. But you're the defendant. You get this letter and you say, actually, they're right. I made a I see I made a mistake there. You might just want to do the right thing and fix it, even if they don't have a defamation case, because you want to be a respectable and reliable journalist, someone like John Trent. And you want to <coughs> fix it. And you want to and you want to. And you want to, you want to make you want to you want to make uh, things right. Take a look at that letter uh, after Valiant gets it out there, and see if you can help me figure out what the false claims were. And now for the response from Ron Coleman in the Dillon Law Group, representing ThatParkPlace.com. This is addressed to Mr. Morris of the Morris, Kieran, and O'Keefe Law Firm in Chesapeake, Virginia, regarding J. Ann Lopez and Black Girl Gamers Incorporated. Dear Mr. Morris, we represent that park place, its principals and employees, and we write in response to yours of March 27th, 2024. We have reviewed your demands and on consideration find them both meritless and ridiculous. For these reasons, your demands are rejected in whole and we consider the matter closed. Please direct any further inquiries as may be necessary to the undersigned by email. Very truly yours, Ronald D. Coleman. And for a more detailed review, legal review of this, make sure you check out the video on Ron Coleman's channel where he covered this live. Last night, as a matter of fact, we'll leave a link to the replay of that live show below in the description of this one. Until next time, take care. Make sure you're subscribed to Valiant Renegade and join us every Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern for the live show.